long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And he brought him unto him. And when he saw him, Let's read this one more time. Say it unto me. If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. How many things? All. All right. Verse 24 of being written. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said, With tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. I want to talk this morning for a few moments about help my unbelief. My unbelief. How many of y'all know that that father is not the only one that has an unbelief? And, uh, and I would go as far to say uh, the majority of you, if not most of you, if not all of us, deep down on the inside of us, we believe but there is an unbelief in us that will cause us not to be able to get God to release the things uh, that he had for us because of our unbelief. Amen. Are you in here? We believers uh, have been given power, uh, power on the inside to be able to open up the windows and the doors of heaven and, and, and to be able to get God to release so much to us. But our problem is, is that we have been read in the Western culture where we have been taught about doctors and lawyers and every other profession. Uh, uh, we taught more about the help from people than we have the help from God. So therefore, when people can't help us any longer, we really don't know how to get to God. Most of us, if we're not careful, soon as we get sick, instead of going to God and giving God the opportunity to heal us, we usually run to the doctor before we pray about it. That is what you call a portion of unbelief. And not that we don't believe, it's just that deep down in us, we have a portion of unbelief. Belief. Uh, are y'all going to track with me? And the devil will put that to us to cause us to think that we can't make it because, because of the pressure that is on us. But I stop by to tell you that God is able to do all things, especially to those who will believe. We are, no doubt, we are believers. We are believers. And I believe every one of us in here are believers. But the problem is, again, is there's a but behind it. I, I believe, but, you know, you, I heard folks say, you better use common sense. And, you know, and I read you crazy. People know better now. You better depend, you better depend on or the doctor. And very few people who are telling us that God has power to do what we need done when we are in trouble. Most of us are still being taught. Even the church right today, same fall of life, when you try everything else and everything else failed, then try Jesus. And that's some teaching of the church. That's some song that we have sang down through the years. But I stop by to tell you that why don't you just get rid of everything else and try Jesus first? You would have to go through all of the things. The church, the church, the church, I've said this over and over again, but I, I have to say it again. The church has lost its power and its authority. Now, there's very little respect anymore for the church. 
And the church was a place where people would reverence. They wouldn't, they wouldn't dare come into church and never be. They, they wouldn't dare come into the church and sit up there and whistle and talk and, and laugh and play. They would not dare to come into church and steal from the church. But nowadays, people don't have any respect for the house of God. That was a day when preacher back in my day, when you see the preacher, you would, if you didn't even know who he was, you would knock your head and you would treat him with some respect and dignity. And even diggers, they had respect for digging. If you want to dig them back then in the day, young folks and wealth in the world respected you as a man of God. But all of those days are gone. Well, I got some good news. I got some good news. Young folk, I hear some good news. I believe that we're going to get that power and respect back. I believe that the house of God is put, getting in a place where we're going to get that respect back. How do you get that respect? Ain't nobody going to give you nothing. We got people running around now. I'm a preacher and you don't respect me. Ain't nobody going to respect you because you got a title. Respect that doesn't come from the fact that you got on your head. Respect me as an apostle because I got an apostle roll on. And if there's nothing in this role, what's happening is when ain't nothing operating, you can take the role and use it for a planet or crook. So we got preachers and diggers and, and laity who want to be respected, but they are not carrying themselves in a respected way. I, I don't know, I see, I see my friend from Larry's restaurant, I can't think of her name, when we go into that place, before I even knew who she was, and, and when I walked in there, I knew this, I always, I don't care who my waitress was, whether it was a good waitress or a bad waitress, I always was going to give them a tip. And I'm going to give them more than anybody tip because I never leave a tip percent. And I, the other day we was in Richmond eating and I left the woman a tip just as big as our uh, lunch was. And just ain't going to leave all that here because, because it was such a bad waitress. If it had been a good waitress, I probably would have gave her 15 But since she was so bad, I wanted to show her that there are some people that don't feed into bad people. If you had, you had, but I still want to be good. Because the love of God has trained us to do what's right. Church has always been an organism. It's a living thing. It's something that every day we get up, it, 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 this up to this alive. The church is not an organization where you come in and do whatever you want to do. The church is an organization and everything should change. We, we, we were talking about last Sunday how the power of God moved in this place. We never even had no right to preach. And I used to say again that most preachers would have been blood mad if we had had a service and they had already prepared and then they didn't get a chance to preach. A choir will be so mad that they don't practice their song and now they can't sing their song because the church is not an organization, it's an organization. And when the organization begins to do something different, you got to shift with the thing. Now, uh, and AJ did not have a plan to sing. When I called her, she had no idea. I was going to call her, but when I called her, she didn't know what her watch was to play. It didn't make any difference what her watch was to play for her. What made a difference was when she got up here, she had to say, God, I can't do this by myself. I know that I'm called on the spot, and I know I can sing, but my singing will be no good unless your presence and your power can be in this thing. And so my brothers and my sisters, some of you sitting there looking at me and you are waiting for time, you got to be concentrating on the move of God. God is not going to bless you. He's not going to take you to heaven and you want to hang on to earth. Stop looking at your neighbor and trying to find out what's going on. And say, God, speak to me. My spirit is open. My soul is open. I need you to come in and to talk with me. The church is a place where we ought to come expecting something from the Lord. I, every Sunday morning, every Wednesday night, every Thursday or Friday, I'm just asking God, 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 look, when we come to church Sunday, I don't know what you're going to do. We may not have no more 25 people there. It ain't going to make no difference. We may have chairs in the house. It's still not going to make a difference. What's going to make a difference, Roger, is not how many people we have, but how much spirit is going to be in the church. I don't know about no but in the mind when I come to the church, I want to make sure that I see some glimpse of the power of God. I want to see some stuff that no man can do by the mere hands or no man can do by the human body. I want to experience a move of the Holy Ghost. I want to 
see God show up in a way that even a blind man will be able to say, I know God is in here somewhere. I don't know exactly where he is. I don't know where he's in the back door or the front door. But one thing I know that God is in the building. Forgive everybody. 
I, I, I miss every time I turn around. If I want to remember, remind me, reminded how God can forgive me for my sin, all I got to do is look at the woman at the well. <laughs> and five husbands that were shagging up, but that didn't stop Jesus from showing up. <laughs> See, that time in our lives that we'll catch people out because they don't live as good as we do. That time when you will say, he ain't got no business standing up there like that and all that time. That was a time we could give a better day of baby up to God because the husband and the, the mother and the father wasn't married. But I believe in this, that that baby ought to go to God And anybody who don't think a baby is good enough to be dedicated up to God ain't good enough to stand in the pulpit. Because I got my God is a healing God. Yeah. He took that woman and told that woman, he told that woman, just want to go back to him. Won't you go on and just don't sin no more? You ain't got the word. But that woman in the doctor when he was caught her, he, you ain't got the word for that no more. Get on my face. Leave me alone. Yeah, your sins are forgiven. Just don't go and keep on living there. And everything is all right. I'm going to give you a know that it was nothing but the grace of God that made you who you are today. You might not be as good as somebody else. You might not be as bad as somebody else. But one thing about it, it was the same grace that pulled me out of that market claim, put my feet on solid ground. It's the same grace that the same your sister, your brother, the same grace that saved a sinner like me. If they come to the church, let them come. Yeah. McDonald's ain't never saved nobody. Uh -huh. Brother, they ain't talking you can have your own way. You can't have your way at no way to be. I pull up at the window too. Give me all these people on the system that run with some special soul and some hundreds of litter. And he says, okay, anything else? I say, yeah. And a large soda and a big fry. And when I pull up to the window, they say something like five dollars and forty cents. I say, I ain't got but a dollar. Well, you can't get your bill. You know what I'm talking about? You told me I can have my way. You can't have your way. No way. <laughs> Sunday. 
Last Wednesday, last Wednesday, so last week, he told me he was coming, he didn't show up at Bible study. I called him back and I said, look, don't worry, but it was raining. <laughs> I said, we usually have at least 100 people every Wednesday night. We didn't have no more, like 87, 85, 82. 82, we fell down to 12 or 15, so we didn't have 100 people. And I told him, I said, well, maybe it was raining. You know, that's, that's use that excuse. It was raining. Maybe you might restrict the driving license. I'll give him an excuse. Because I'm going to let him know I'll never give up on it. I'll never give up on it. No, sir, never, never. I, 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 got, I got folks that I know that their minds are all jacked up. But every time I get a child, I whisper in their ear that just because they're jacked up don't mean they're going to stay jacked up. If there's enough love to get together from the beginning, there's enough love to get it back together. If God put it together, let nothing separate it. Humble yourself and say, without a shadow of doubt, that with God all things are possible. With God all things are possible. You need to know that He had power to heal. You know, He had one of the blind. Just give sight to the blind. Yeah, He did. I know we don't pray for Jordan New. Other folk will pray. I'm praying Georgia is still blind, but it does not negate that God still had power. Some of us want stuff right in and there. How many of you know that just as long as Jordan New come in this church, I guarantee you, as long as He comes here, and as long as He comes to the altar, He was up here at 8 o'clock this morning. I put my hand right on Him, say, God, heal Him in the name of Jesus. And if He walked away, He was still blind. But I bet you one thing, that doesn't mean He's going to stay blind, because of the crowd of the crowd of all that will be one time with God. Because I 
found on how to be an apostle is to do what Jesus done. These disciples, when you heard the word disciple, they are learners. They are folk who have been given the power, but still have not been able to exercise their power. So as long as you don't exercise the authority of the office, then what you are is still a disciple. So if God ever put you in the fullness of your office, then you would no longer be the disciple of that office, or the other office, but you would be whatever the gifted is. That's why we got pastors who have never walked into the fullness of a pastor is because of the mere fact that they are they need to be a disciple, but yet they don't step up to put their cap on before they were graduated. Oh, are y'all heard me? Yeah. And so what these guys did was Jesus had gave his disciples. I like it because every time you see the, whenever you see the disciples doing something that was powerful, they were apostles. Whenever you see anyone you see in the Bible where they're supposed to be doing something, they can't do anything, the Bible called them disciples. At this particular place, they had already been given the authority to be apostles. But Jesus had left nine of them down at the end of the, uh, uh, of the hill, and they had gone up in the mountains. And when he went up there, he told them that y'all got power to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, and none of them was able to do it. Every one of them was there. All nine was down there. And this man had brought this little child to these nine disciples. And they were there praying over Marsha. They were spitting. They were all in tongues. Hush on my Lord. And everything there. They knew how to speak in tongues. They knew how to pray. They knew how to do all of that. Have you ever seen some demons and some preachers who can pray to heaven see like it's open, but nothing happens? Just like you learn to play the p or uh, piano or pick the uh, guitar, they also learn how to pray. And that guitar that you got gonna do just what you tell it to do, and whatever you learn to do. I see you last Sunday. I saw last Sunday when you start playing. All of a sudden, God could pick you up out of what you knew and carried you into a stump, a pump, a push that I have never heard before. Because whenever you get out of your own minority and get into the right of God, he can carry you to places that no one ever goes to. So here they were wrestling and praying over him. That's why I said he would have watched you pray over him. I see the devil comes in here often. We really do. They come in here with a name. Come in here for title. Both of them preaching. And the only time she can get off is when she get off on her own self. She said, oh, now, here she goes. Hey, 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 hey. And when they go around, people think you look on the side of the eye. Don't see nobody looking. Here she goes. Here Trying to fabricate me and anoint you. So I can do the same thing. And I'm not that this moment does not help you with the same thing that you need to do this evening. So you don't learn how to pray. You pray until you learn. You let God speak to you. Not when you speak to God. And when the heavens are open and open right, you will not stay in that wheelchair. Amen. Wait until the heavens open. Wait until God help our unbelief and put us into a place where that he is, his power is shoving through this house. Why can't we do these things because of our unbelief? And the men they had wrestled with this boy and they could not heal him and they could not do it. I get so sick and tired of churches open up every Sunday doing the same thing all day long and nothing happens. 
We let the diggers take care of the bride and praise service. And then they sing up, they sing some song. And most of the diggers won't even start testifying until the preacher get up. And then the first thing is, as soon as the preacher come up, it's 11.30 now. And then, well, I know it's time to turn it over to the pulpit. Well, if you know it's time to turn it over to the pulpit, why don't you turn it over to the pulpit? But I got something I got to say. Disrespect and how in the world can God get the house in order if the house is out of order? Yeah. And the time to turn it over, turn it over. You were out here when it was 10 people, when you can't say nothing now. Oh. You were out here when it was 50, but the, 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 the prime time now is 11 30, where folks know that the pulpit don't get it, then people are coming. Because they didn't want to come in and hurt your saying, test the line. Say something that's gonna move somebody. So if you and your wife is not together, if you guys are not into a good relationship, I tell you right from your face, don't put your hand on me. I don't need nobody. I don't need no alma bar touching me with a spirit of not being in peace and home. That's the come on. You are anybody. I don't want you to. I don't want that spirit. I want that spirit of meanness. Don't know how to treat you. How in the world are we gonna treat our how in the world can we testify to God when we don't even know how to treat the one that God has given us? I said it so many times. Oh man. Always that God gave you like him. It's, your car ain't like God, your house is not like God, that money is not like God, that's outfit that you brought here is not like Lord, the Lord. I don't care what he gave you, that's only one thing. That's like him and that's your wife. And if you don't know how to treat her, how in the world are you going to know how to treat the house of God? So they couldn't do it. And so now Jesus, Peter, James, and John is up on the Mount of Transfiguration. They watched Jesus with the glory of the Lord came over him. If you stay around Jesus long enough, you're going to have to see a glory. And I, I'm getting ready to bring this thing to an end. But if you stay in the church long enough, you're going to see a glory. Some of y'all come here today to see a baby. Some came to see a certificate. Some came to hear the choir. Some came to hear just a sermon. But I tell you, put all that together. Oh, it was so good to hear the choir sing. It was so wonderful to see the babies navigated unto God. It was so nice to see AJ walking the aisle singing the song of God. It's all right to hear me put the mic in my hand and to preach the gospel. But there is nothing that ain't nothing to amount to anything. Unless you some way, somehow, see the glory of the Lord in this place. If you will never see the glory of God in this place, you will just come in the church and nothing will ever happen. I'm looking for the glory. I don't know where I may have to find it. I may have to look at you to find it. I may have to look at you to find it. I don't know where that glory is. If I have to get it in this chair, let's hide the glory of God. I've got to find it. Because I have noticed in this house song. So when they came out of the mountain, Jesus steps down with his three disciples. He had the Pharisees and the Sadducees down there arguing and fussing, and the disciples down there fussing with them. That's why I say, uh, Brother Gaze, you wonderful digger. I ain't ever seen nobody in the path of the brother Gaze. But I'll tell you right now, watch this. If you ever get caught up into a crowd, of people who don't want to do what's right, then what's going to happen to you is this. You're going to get caught up into the same thing. God has given all of these guys power. And here they are letting the Pharisees and the Pharisees and the other weak disciples arguing and fussing about certain things where now nobody can do any work. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. right. Michael, hang around Charles, and if Charles don't want to do anything, and watch and see, if that is the case, watch and see, won't Charles rub off on you? Some of y'all have been rubbed and influenced by the wrong people. And so what God was trying to show the disciples is that 
when you take your eyes off of me and start listening at you know, the Pharisees and the disciples or anybody else, you will lose your anointing. So the man walks up to Jesus and he said, what's, what's going on here? And I said, I brought my son here and they did everything they could, but they couldn't heal him. And Jesus says to the man, he says, do you believe? The guy said, yeah, I believe, but help my unbelief. What is that saying to the church? So we get up in the morning and we come to the church and we heard all of this stuff about Jesus and who he is, but yet when we leave away from here, there's an unbelief that will grab us. When sickness comes, when trouble comes, it will just grab us and tell us that, look, you don't want to hear that stuff. But I want a faith like Abraham. That when God told Abraham to step out, he got to walk in. I want a faith like Elijah. That when Elijah, when Elijah told Elijah, said, I want you to stop here at Gilgal. I want you to stop there. He said, that is the place of beginning. I will stop there, but I cannot stay there. I cannot stay wherever you go, I will go. And when Elijah began to move on, Elijah moved on to Bethel, the place of dreams, I heard Elijah. Elijah said, I'm going there too, because the place of dreams are good. But I can't just dream about God. I just can't dream about being successful. I'm tired of dreaming. Everybody else got money and I'm broke. I have a dream, but I'm tired of just dreaming. I want to go on the other side. I want to go to Jericho where there will be some victory, where I can see some miracle, where I can see some power. But I don't want to stay at Jericho because I want to go to the other side of, of Jericho where there is some past life there. I want to go to the river of Jericho where I present victory. I want to go to a church where I know that if I go there, God is going to do the right
why so many people can come to church on Sunday and just have a good time. And then for Monday, the devil got you back doing the same old thing. Because you're not saved. You know, you're, not, you're not really, you're not walking in your salvation. Come on, come on to Jesus, you say as you are. If you are here right now, you want to rededicate your life to God. You need to come just as you are. If you are here, this is your day that you want God to help you in your unbelief. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody. I know I'm talking to somebody. Don't let the power of the devil outpower the power of God. He will not win the end to the end. He will not win. He might win today, but he will not win. If he convinces you not to come, he has no power in your life. There's not a voice in your ear saying you need to come. You're going to come just as you are. I'm talking to every person in this house. If you are here, you need to come. And nobody begging for nobody to come, but I just don't want you to be passed over. Because on tomorrow, when you're not in the church, on next week, when you're not around a preacher or bigot or choir, you're going to need somebody there to stand with you. And if he's not standing with you now, you can imagine what the end going to be. Come on, quiet.